Welcome to another episode of Shots from the Winchester podcast, where we explore leadership topics from a variety of perspectives. This podcast is brought to you by Greencastle Consulting, your nation's premier strategy execution firm. Today, we're venturing into the fascinating world of artificial intelligence and why it's important to stay up to speed. AI is rapidly transforming the business landscape and adopting it isn't a luxury anymore. It's becoming a necessity for staying competitive in today's market. And AI is revolutionizing even the most traditional of businesses. In today's throwback episode, we're going to delve into why integrating AI into your business strategy is so crucial. So let's just jump right in because I know the audience is really clamoring to figure out what is going on with AI these days. and. What's the evolution? So let's jump into the first question I wanted to ask is, how does the utility industry, or how can the utility industry leverage AI? So uh, I'll, I'll start, mm -hmm. that's, that's right. Um, kind of what, when we worked, worked on our last podcast, right? We, we took the last 10 minutes, I think we were actually talking about AI. Mm -hmm. and, and I mentioned that, you know, AI is a very broad term. Mm -hmm. um, one aspect of it, right? You know, we were talking about just a whole decision sort of modeling, right? It can be considered artificial intelligence. One aspect I think that's that's a great use in the utilities industry is sort of um, maintaining the grid, right? Mm -hmm. So you can have a lot of these um, early fault detection programs that are out there where you actually have special sensors that can be attached uh, in the system mm -hmm. that can basically determine when things will fail before they're going to fail, mm -hmm. right? So if you think about it, what would you rather have as, as a consumer, your power goes out and then the electric company comes out and fixes your power? Mm. Or do you want them to say, hey, that pole and those transformers and all that stuff is going to fail probably within the next six months. Mm. Let's go out and proactively replace it and we can do all the switching so that people don't actually lose power. Mm. Right. So it's better for the customer. It's better for the utility itself. And it's just better overall. That's pretty cool. And how does that balance out for like alerts as well? Maybe is there an automation format for that? Like when, for instance, over the weekend, my I heard a transformer explode in my neighborhood and the power went out and everyone that is attached, you know, to their, you know, their bill got an alert automatically that says, hey, we know the power is out. Uh, we're going to get on that and like we should get your power back on in short time. Kind yeah. Of so I, I think with the the goal with the early fault detection type stuff would be to prevent even the the need for messaging, mm. right? Because it should be hopefully seamless. Now maybe they'll say, "Hey, some of our people will be out working in your area," mm. right? Maybe that's sort of the uh, the alert that would come out. Mm. But it's not. It's these things are designed to to prevent the emergencies, mm, I right? If, if that kind of makes sense. Yeah. No. No. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, anything else? Yeah, so my thoughts is like not only for the, you know, preventative maintenance aspect of it, but the optimization of the grid. Mm. Uh, kind of looking at it from like the whole picture here, you know, you have uh, generation, you know, the production of power. Mm -hmm. Then you have transmission, taking it from those uh, power plants to substations. Mm -hmm. Then the last part of the equation, you got distribution going from, uh, you know, those substations to your house. Right. So, you know, AI can be leveraged in all aspects of that mm -hmm. to not only, you know, keep optimal runtime, mm -hmm. uh, but also optimizing the grid as well. So mm -hmm. that could be done through the use of smart meters. Preventative mm. maintenance, like Brad was talking about, um, you know, not only that, but using AI to analyze the weather oh, compared to yeah. seasons. So then you can do demand forecasting. So mm. AI can be leveraged in all three of those facets, and then ultimately, you know, utilities are there to produce power and keep power going. So that makes sense, especially like in the icy seasons when lines are yeah. dropping. You need linemen out there to like work on these things. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's important to note. So let's talk about something that everybody's a little f afraid of with AI, and that is, is are we going to lose our jobs? Is AI going to be so useful to an industry that they're just going to say, hey, we don't need people here anymore? How do you feel about that? Uh, I can take a stab at this one. So there's a, two things that I'm thinking here is one, I don't think it's going to replace jobs. It's going to replace tasks. Mm -hmm. So a lot of taking, like, for example, in the utilities industry, a lot of forms are still manual, pen and paper. So AI can yeah. take it to the automated aspect of it through, you know, multiple different systems, such as like SAP or what have you. So mm -hmm. there's that automation aspect of it. Now, in terms of replacing jobs as a whole, 
I don't think it'll replace jobs, but you do need to adopt this or else you're going to get left behind. Right. Just simply through the state of competition and, you know, how the market is trending towards AI and, you know, increased data analytics. So, yeah. I don't think it's going to replace, but if you don't adopt it, you're going to be get put behind essentially so yeah that, and that's brand. potential with everything especially in new industries and new new technologies uh, if you don't adapt you're more than likely going to get left behind mm -hmm. yeah. you have something you want to add yeah yeah no as i mean it's exactly the right point right mm -hmm. because um what this technology is going to let us do is basically upskill ourselves or, or give us more time to do um that the more deep thought work mm. right yeah um to, to what scotty was saying right if you're if you're spending five or six hours a day on these like repetitive mundane tasks right then then that is your job is to be the task monkey mm. if you can task monkey things away to this ai or to any other automation system mm. then that gives you more time to do better more creative deeper stuff mm. right yeah. and that's i think what most companies are are looking for mm. right they, they want to keep the the human capital that they have and make them better because then that drives up you know um, profits and all kind of good stuff yeah right and i think this is something that uh you just mentioned right we see it all the time with any sort of technological advancements there's a uh, there's a concern about uh, jobs going away and some of them might right but what ends up happening is that that new opportunities are created and people can reskill in, into different industries or um just trying to understand how how to use the tools in in, in their new industry right right if, if that kind of makes sense mm -hmm. So let's not worry about losing our jobs. Let's let's look at maybe um, evolving into new positions mm -hmm. as as uh, as AI approaches. You know more more usage or or as AI um, finds more more use. Like yeah. you know one use case that I'm thinking about already is like uh, you know when you when you call the help desk. You know mm -hmm. hey my power's out. What do I do? Type of thing. Mm -hmm. AI can be leveraged in a way to increase that customer experience. So mm -hmm. instead of you know potentially being on a you know waiting line for 45 minutes or however right. long, yeah. you're going to be speaking to an AI you know mm -hmm. bot or what have you to get those solutions that you need mm -hmm. or hopefully get to a solution while you're waiting for a human mm. so overall it's just going to increase that customer satisfaction of the users within the utility companies as well so now is yeah that something that we can do here at greencastle can we provide that kind of service for for like a utility service i'll company? leave it up to brad on that one yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'll put my name on that right <laughs> so very so good so we're strategy execution consultants right like that 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 is our task mm -hmm. um you know we we execute people's strategies through project management process improvement change management uh throw in financial controlling budget control and data and analytics right mm -hmm. so if we're looking at Doing a, a digital transformation, right? At adding in AI uh, in, into our into our business, um, particularly if we're using, say, like like chatbots or whatever, we can certainly work on on implementing that strategy, mm. right? Yeah. That, that that's where I think we're we're key. We also have our expertise in sort of knowing what is available and what's out there mm. to suggest to to our clients mm. uh, of what they can implement. Nice. I did want to hop right back about the um, hey, is, is this going to take all, all of our jobs, right? Right. Yes. And just to, to foot stomp a little bit, like this has been a question that's been going on since the Industrial Revolution. <laughs> it's true. Right. Yeah, I, yeah, and you know, I always got to bring things back to Star Trek because yeah. I'm a big Star Trek nerd, right? <laughs> and that's where I learned about I, I So the Industrial Revolution in, in England, right? They had the Luddites, right? Then you also had the the, the folks in um, uh, somewhere somewhere on the continent. I think it was either Denmark or, um, or the Netherlands. I always confuse the Danes and the Dutch, unfortunately, <laughs> but where they would take their they're, they're clogs, right? They're, mm. they're sabos, and they would kind of toss them into the machines, you know, doing um, sabotage or sabotage, uh, right? That's yes. kind of where the where the term comes from. Okay, uh, which I learned from watching Star Trek Six <laughs> <laughs> years and years and years ago. Yeah. Um, so this has been a question that we've been wrestling with for for centuries, mm. right? Yeah. And ultimately, what ends up happening is that there's change. And, you know, just like I always kind of, uh, whenever I'm on the podcast, I always talk about change management is key, mm -hmm. right? We, we just have to know as individual employees and as people who are leading our companies to basically just manage that change. Mm -hmm. AI is one of those things that is, um, it's like when the internet started up, you know, and I was working at a business that um, the owner didn't believe that the internet was going to be uh, in existence. He thought it was going to be a fad. And so um, obviously I had to move on. Uh, <laughs> but um, uh, there are people out there that see these things as fads or, or see these things as like fading out soon or something like that. That's not what's happening. I think what's happening here is that people are maybe in a level of denial 
of what that technology is capable of and then maybe um, used to the legacy aspects of what they're into. Um, can you speak on like, um, and we've had a conversation already on legacy as far as legacy and then like transitioning into um, like cloud-based type con like um, services and stuff like that. Can you speak to like how that would affect someone in an industry like, like, like the utilities industry, um, not taking advantage of those AI components? Yeah. Well, I think the use case is already there. I mean, especially mm. within the utilities industry, you have those opportunities for optimization. Mm. And that's where AI definitely shines through and through. Mm. And, you know, I don't think it's going to be a fad just simply because the value's there already. Mm. Um, I feel like with the fad, like those trends might kind of diminish over time. Mm -hmm. But that value will be there as long, like yeah. forever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, honestly, yeah. Yeah, um, d definitely, right? So if we think about well, we're talking about the, the use case, right? Going back to the, hey, is this going to steal my job uh, yeah. question? And our argument is that no, it's going to actually give you the opportunity to do better, more valuable work for your company. Yeah. So if they look at it from the company perspective, if you don't adopt these technologies or you don't seriously consider adopting these technologies, you're basically consigning your, your, your people to still do these mundane tasks. Mm. Whereas your competitor may you know basically they they now are leveraging the human brain for doing mm. uh, what is really good at which is creative work and deep thought and st strategy right mm. instead you're kind of taking a chunk of those people's days and you're consigning them to, to typing away on the keyboard doing doing the stuff that could be automated away mm. so you're taking right. that aspect of like if it's not broke don't fix it and yeah if it's not broke that's okay it's fine if you're going to do that but your competition might be running circles around yeah. you because they're not they're they're taking advantage of something that's making their work a lot. Another easier. thing yeah. too, like the reason why I keep hitting this optimization mm -hmm. part is because it's saving time and resources. That mm -hmm. alone saves money, right? So right. it's just going to have that trickle down effect to the end user, which is the customer. So mm -hmm. um, I feel like this optimization aspect will, you know, provide benefits to the end user. Yeah, and you know, everybody kind of wins in that sense. So utility industry needs to be taking advantage of this, especially. Yeah. yeah, there's data everywhere. I think so. And yeah. whenever you have data, you can use AI. Yeah. As far as AI goes, too, um, how advanced is AI right now? Like, there's there's a lot of people that think that AI is like some brain somewhere in like a a vat somewhere, like, <laughs> and and it's so smart that it's like just going to take over everything, and we're all just going to die. It's going to turn into Skynet. Terminator is going to be walking might. all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> I can't you can tell, tell I'm a geek, sure. right? Yeah. Sci-fi. <laughs> so I'll I'll go back and I'll um I'll, I'll just hit on one of the things we talked about in our last conversation, uh, okay. just to foot stop it, right? Yeah. Is that I kind of consider, and now we're going to talk about the generative AI, right? Yeah. The large language models. That that's the one that everyone's kind of um you know, hopped up on right now, mm -hmm. um, which again it is like a really cool thing that can be leveraged and, and used awesomely. Mm -hmm. um, but I consider kind of like a high school intern, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, where you kind of give it a task and, and it comes back with with uh, the first draft or maybe the, the first draft and a half and, and you basically ask it to do some more revisions and it comes back with something but that thing that it always comes back with still needs to be reviewed by by you mm. right or, or by one of your colleagues or by a SME and tweaked f for the final presentation right mm. or the final like product whatever that is um so it's not some super intelligence in fact um if you're if, if you're out there like in, in shots from Winchester land and, and you're playing around in ChatGPT or Gemini or Claude or whatever, um, you're probably already aware that it can come back with with wrong information. Sounds great, right? You know, but yeah. straight up just wrong. Like I, I know when I was first playing around with GPT and I was asking it for citations on something and it would just make up quotes. <laughs> it would just be like, oh yeah, this is by this random it's guy. Really. So, yeah. <laughs> so so it's not this super intelligence that, mm -hmm. that, that's out there. We're not at the um, at, at, at the AGI stage yet and, yeah. and I don't think we'll be there for, for quite a while. Well, you have to train the models for sure, yeah. especially in the utilities industry, you're gonna have a bunch of complex data systems. Mm. So just through machine learning, those models can learn over time, but initially you're gonna have to do some revisions like Brad stated. Yeah, and Greencast is gonna help in that, mm. you know, and helping those approaches as far as getting you um, on that bandwagon as far as like figuring out what works for you as far as um, how AI can be leveraged. Not only that, it comes yeah. down to process improvement too, which is one of yes. our core service offerings. Ah. I feel like AI lines up with that 
that, you know, yeah. right right away. Makes I feel sense. like, you know, AI can kind of, you know, expedite those uh, process improvement, you know, steps and whatnot. So or, or even find where where we might not even notice that yeah. the process needs to be improved sure. or where there's opportunity. Yeah. yeah. Like you so. can take a process flow of any, you know, process within a utilities unit, mm -hmm. you know, team or what have you and incorporate AI, AI into those steps and optimize and create efficiencies. So. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Now, we had a, a, a comment recently about uh, wanting to know more about quantum computers. <laughs> and I don't know a whole lot about the, what's going on with quantum yeah. computers right now, but if it's going to be anything that's a, a vat, a brain in a vat somewhere, yeah. it's going to be one of these quantum computers. I'm, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to have to consult ChatGPT to learn more about yeah. quantum computing. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to hold out for those time crystals you're talking <laughs> right. about earlier. Right? <laughs> the timey whiny crystals yes. that they're using. Yes. Yeah. So, um, thank you for this conversation because I think that AI is something that um, people are still trying to understand and still trying to figure out how it operates and how it works for them. Yeah, you got to talk about the Scotty Hotbot. Oh, Let's get into that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about the Scotty Hotbot. Okay. So long story short, <laughs> what it is that here at Greencast, we have a bunch of guides, methodologies, best practices, lessons learned. There's a bunch of information that's just scattered within File Explorer. Mm. Um, so uh, essentially this GAC bot uses the you know institutional knowledge of Greencastle, combines it into one you know bot i guess is the yeah. word and um instead of manually going through hundreds and hundreds of pages of the best content that Greencastle has created over time mm -hmm. um you can just ask this bot you know any questions that you may have best practices for product management process improvement change management mm -hmm. uh, data related you know inquiries and um, that GAC bot will help you find an answer and uh, cut down time of research and all that. Anything you want to add there, Brad? Yeah, just saying that um, at, in the back end of your implementation is is pretty cool because it um, utilizes retrieval log management generation, mm. uh, where basically it's it's taking these like these specific documents that that we care about and it's putting them in, a, it's parsing them out, putting them in a vector database, and then the large language model is actually using queries to kind of pull back the relevant pieces. Mm. And to answer the questions, yeah, right. And there are different ways we we, we can do this, and we've been experimenting a, a lot. Whether we're using um, it's like the Microsoft Product Copilot, or we're using a uh, different tool yeah. set, like uh, what was your Voice platform? Flow. Yeah, Voice Flow, you know, mm -hmm. and, and just playing around and experimenting with with the best way to do that, right? Because we don't know what our clients may be using out there, and yeah, so we can certainly have suggestions. But if they're, if they're already on a platform. Mm -hmm. We want to leverage the tools that they already have. I yeah. think there's a huge opportunity for us here at Greencastle too to, you know, dive deeper into this AI aspect of business, mm -hmm. see how it can apply to all industries, and you know, provide innovative solutions for you know our clients and help That's with right. them in that sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's evolving right now, and um, uh, technology evolves exponentially every month you know like every month the computers are getting faster they're getting stronger they're getting a little bit smarter you know and so every time you are the longer you wait the further behind you're going to be mm -hmm. you know i that that that's just facts yeah. <laughs> you know do you guys have any last things you want to say Oh, well, the only thing I want to add is if you have any questions, you know, leave them down in the comments and, mm -hmm. you know, we'll deep dive into that and get you answers because this yeah. is a new field mm -hmm. and uh, we're just trying to stay ahead of the curve as well. So, yeah. Yeah. And then my last thing will be uh, like and subscribe to Shots from the Winchester. Yeah. Right. And uh, keep watching the skies. Definitely. And on behalf of Greencastle, your nation's premier strategy execution firm, I'm your host, Al Green, Brad Kenny, Scott Hop, and we'll see you in the next episode.